thought experiments have deeply influenced the progress in understanding of gravity. Examples are Newton's rotating bucket of water, although Newton wrote he actually performed the experiment, by which he justified absolute space, and Einstein's free fall experiment, by which he justified the equivalence principle. Today, the thought experiment of the space-time curvature or a gravitational wave passing through the double slit experiment regarding quantum superposition is considered the main thought experiment of quantum gravity. In this video, we will present a different thought experiment also in relation to quantum gravity, the perfect weighing box. Let's imagine we have a perfect and ideal human size box which allows no interaction between inside and outside, so that no particles or energy can be transferred through its walls. First, the box is open and placed on Earth's surface, with a weight machine or mass scale inside, and we weight ourselves on it. Then the box is closed and we are brought to outer space far away enough from Earth's or other masses gravitational field. The question now arises, will the weighing machine still weight or mass in deep space the same way as placed on Earth's surface? If no particles are allowed to cross the walls of the box and if gravity is mediated by gravitons, then we should weight the same as when we close the box on Earth's surface, independently of the position of the box in the universe. But if gravity is not mediated by a quantum field with an associated particle and it's instead simply related to space-time itself, then, since space and time are not physical entities, they should affect the inside of the box and we would weight zero sufficiently far away from any mass. But the thought experiment is more complicated, because it relies on the concept of gravitational shielding which is simply the process of shielding an object from the influence of a gravitational field, reducing its weight. Gravitational shielding is a feature of the old 1748 Lesage's theory of gravitation, the first phenomenological theory of gravity, and violates the equivalence principle, because the observable ratio of gravitational mass to inertial mass would not be independent of mass. There is no experimental evidence for gravitational shielding up to a high precision because large bodies such as the Moon and the Earth would partly shield their own gravitational attraction. In fact, during Lee Smolin's PhD in general relativity, he found out and stated that in principle nothing can screen out the force of gravity or stop the propagation of gravitational waves, so nothing can be perfectly isolated. He attempted to model a box containing bouncing gravitational waves with walls that reflected gravitational radiation, but these walls had to have so much density that they collapsed into black holes. Smolin made the assumption that no negative masses or energies could exist, and this is important since electromagnetic shielding is possible thanks to the existence of positive and negative charges. Gravity on the other side is always attractive. But this contradicts another thought experiment coming from Feynman, the sticky bead argument. Two beads sliding freely with small friction are placed on a rigid rod. When a gravitational wave passes over the rod, atomic forces hold the length of the rod fixed, but beads slide back and forth and proper distance between the two beads oscillates. Friction between the beads and the rod takes place, dissipating heat. Since gravitational waves are mainly transverse, the rod has to be oriented perpendicular to the propagation direction of the wave. Where does this dissipated energy come from? It must come from the energy of the gravitational wave. That means not only that gravitational waves carry energy and have physical effect, but that its energy can be transformed or stolen. And what does this mean for gravitational waves to be able to lose energy if gravitational waves are the curvature of space-time by which differences in gravity are transmitted from one point to another? What if our weighing box from the first thought experiment had instead of perfect walls perfect sticky beads which absorb all the energy from gravitational waves? 
wouldn't this stop the gravitational waves and thus space-time curvature communication, creating a perfect isolated box interior? The answer to this question is more complex and there is a difference between two cases to address it. Gravitational waves are radiated by systems of two or more masses whose motion involves acceleration, provided that the motion is not perfectly spherically symmetric. Like an expanding or contracting sphere, or rotationally symmetric with constant angular velocity around its axis of symmetry. In quantum gravity, gravitational waves are on shell gravitons, which satisfy the physical equation of motion and the relativistic energy momentum relation. On shell gravitons can appear in external states and can be absorbed. In contrast, the static gravitational field of a stationary mass does not radiate away and it is not communicated by gravitational waves, it cannot be screened. This is what Smolin probably meant. In quantum gravity, it is communicated by off-shell gravitons, which are non-observable virtual particles. For the case of our weighing box, we don't want to shield its inside from the static gravitational field, but from changes in this gravitational field. We could think about the box experiment as the Earth being expelled far away from near the box while the box is stationary and the change in the space-time curvature around the box propagating as a gravitational wave. Thus, our perfect walls made up of sticky beads should work in blocking this change of space-time curvature. The perfect weighing box argument presented here is a thought experiment because we know that no ideal box with perfectly isolating walls can be built. But leaving aside thought experiments, there is actually no need to have any ideal weighing box. A simpler experiment which slightly differentiates between the gravitational pull of two masses that are close together and their gravitational pull after one of them is taken far away while the other one is partially isolated since the moment both masses were close to one another, would be sufficient to quantify any divergions from our current theories. Could we prove whether gravity is mediated by a boson of a quantum field or by unphysical spacetime curvature with a feasible experiment of this kind?